guys, it's your boy, Barca boy, 103. Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours where there are a lot of huge topics to discuss. Firstly, of course, Barcelona in the market for some of the top youngsters in the world. We have some updates around Claudio Echeverri and Savio William, also known as Messino. But Barcelona have submitted an official bid for Lucas Bacchival and that operation is well underway and is on track for Barcelona to complete at some point in the January transfer window. Along with Bacchival, Barcelona have also made another signing and that is the return of Chadi Riyad. Barcelona have decided to buy him back from Betis with the plan of selling a current center back in the squad. Could it be Aruho to Bayern Munich or could it be the sale of Christensen and Koundé and also the club are playing on the return of Pablo Torre in the summer. Big shake up there that we have to talk about. Also on Chabi how he's lost complete and utter confidence in Oiromeyu who most likely will not even feature that much from now to the end of the season. His, his, uh, his sale in January isn't really contemplated because he won't really help with FFP and the club rather keep you know the numbers there in midfield with it being low. We'll talk about of course midfield signs in January as well but Chavi does not trust Romeyu whatsoever. And finally we have some big new sales in regards to Lewandowski in Saudi Arabia and of course his salary increase next season and also in the future of Visual Felix how Atletico Madrid will not accept another simple loan next season season whatsoever they want a sale no matter what but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it now before we get into this video, this video is sponsored by Number One Foot. Number One Foot is one of the best replica football jersey websites on the market right now. They have a variety of different items at absolutely fantastic prices. For me here today, I'm going to show you guys the training kit from this season. This is the warm-up kit that, that the players use when they go out for training every single day, pre-games as well. You have here the Spotify logo, they have the club badge on it with the diamond as well. And I also have here one of the sweaters they have from last season. This was the Catalonia version. It feels like I bought this from the Nike store directly. The quality is absolutely unreal. The printing is fantastic. And of course, mainly the prices are unbeatable. And if you use the discount code BOY at checkout, you do get an additional 15% off your final order that is b-o-y use it at checkout you get 15 percent off your order and all orders above 80 dollars as well will guarantee you free shipping so what are you waiting for click the top link in the description down below and get your new football kits today Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 48 hours. We first have a report coming in about what is the exact plan for Barcelona in the upcoming January transfer window. Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying the midfield profile which Barcelona are looking for in January is of a player who can play as a pivot and as an interior as well, who can provide the team with a good pass and also be able to stop opponents' attacks. A little bit of a rhyme there. The problem for Barcelona, as always, is financial fair play. Unless an income for Barcelona Studios arise from Liberal Football Finance or any other company, it will be a very difficult mission. Both Oye Romeu and Marc Alonso will not generate a lot of FFP, even if they do end up leaving the club this summer. Essentially, he's saying there that we need uh, an economic leader to come help us. There's no sale that will really help us FFP wide of course sales that we want to make you know your Romeos your Alonzos whatever the case may be even Roberto maybe transfer to uh Inter Milan it has to be that economic lever I do believe it will happen it's just now down to what is the actual deadline is it the end of this month December 31st or is it the end of next month on January the 31st nonetheless though there are been a lot of rumors recently about Barcelona making that economic lever uh we're talking with 6th Street apparently there's even been talks about Goldman Sachs as well so we'll wait and see how Barcelona earned this 40 million euros from the uh, sale of Barcelona Studios but again that is their main objective but one arrival that will not be stopped by FFP is of course the arrival of Victor Roque. Fabrizio Romano has come out saying that Victor Roque will travel to Europe in the next 48 hours and plans to arrive in Barcelona tomorrow. His family will accompany him. And Barcelona did tease his arrival yesterday. They had that little uh, the meme with the guy when he's in the curtains and he pulls it down. They had a video of Victor Roque kissing the Barcelona badge. So he is coming. 100% confirmed. No FFP is going to stop his arrival this January in a big, big arrival for Barcelona. Now again, in terms of the January transfer window, we know that Victor Roque a billion percent is coming. It's just now down to the what if part in regards to a midfield signing. 
Now, the only midfielder that has been linked with Barcelona over the past 48 hours has been Andre, the Brazilian midfielder for Fluminense, who of course they just lost the Club World Cup final to Man City 4-0. But Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that Andre Fluminense is on Barcelona's agenda, but he's not a priority for right now. The club considers him an interesting player with quality and strength. Right now, everything is open and Andre could finally be the chosen one if the moves for other options who are above him in the pecking order don't materialize due to the market circumstances. So Andre is a strong option. There are a few people ahead of him, but if those ones fall through Andre would be next in line this would be a loan I would believe with a mandatory buy option if it does end up happening look from the other we've been linked with a lot of midfielders in the sense that you know free agents sport money with yourself I'm not gonna waste your time putting on the screen you know your Kerkoviaks your Thiago's your Jorginho the recycled names that we heard you know months and months and months ago I think out of all the names I've heard that's realistic the two of the top of my list would be Lo Celso and Andre. No one else really, you know, moves me, Thiago. If Thiago wasn't injured, I would be really keen on him. Jorginho, of course, he's washed, came again to the Arsenal team. What's the point? There has to be some sort of a medium to long-term future with this uh, midfield that we do bring in in January. If it's just a short-term fix, and of course, bring in anyone for six months, whatever the case may be, but if their club is looking for the medium and long-term, it has to be someone who follows that roadmap. So, we'll wait and see how things materialize. Again, I think once we get Victor Roque in, present him next week, we play against Las Palmas, we play the Copa del Rey round 32 that's I think when the rumors will really you know step up for the midfielder because again once we the squad really uh, you know get thin we don't know when Pedri's coming back of course Gabby's out for the season De Jong's in and out Gunduan cannot play every second second of every single game we'll talk about Romeo later on in the video as well but a midfielder is I wouldn't say desperately needed but very very needed to the point that if you want to be successful this season we have to bring someone in and of course the club know this that's what they are planning for midfield signing in January so we'll see how things turn out but for now Andre is a decent candidate to come in as a midfield reinforcement for Barcelona next month. Now with the club focused on signing a midfielder in January they do have one eye on the summer transfer window in regards to young talent and they do have their eyes on Claudio Echeverri but that deal is slowly but surely slipping from Barcelona's hands. Fabrizio Romano has come out saying that Barcelona really wanted Claudio Echeverri. Deco is a big fan of him and also others at the club and Echeverri was also very attracted by the prospect of joining Barcelona but it's not possible for Barcelona to proceed right now due to financial fair play. Never say never but at the moment it is absolutely off between Barcelona and River Plate and even Echeverri's representatives. Man City are the big favorites right now and they are advancing in negotiations. The England club and River Plate have an excellent relationship and they want to repeat what they did with Julian Alvarez. Now again, Barcelona's plan was to pay a little bit more than the release clause, paying in installments, and River Plate said no. What Manchester City are doing are not only paying more than, more than the release clause, but they're also willing to loan Echeverri back to River Plate to finish the season as well to get the deal done now. Man City are pushing beyond belief for Echeverri. I think in terms of personal terms, there won't be an issue. The only way for Barcelona to get Echeverri now is for the player to say, nope, I want to wait until the summer for Barcelona. I don't want to go to Man City right now. The deal's off. It has to be the player himself because Man City River Plate are advancing. They're about to reach an, ag uh, an agreement. That's not going to stop anything. It's going to be down to the player. But again, it looks like we have missed out. The reality is that, look, we're going to miss out on a lot of talents. But our situation at the point right now where we cannot be scooping up every single uh, youngster. We have to really pick and choose who we can go for. But it looks like Barcelona will match out on Echeverri unless a miracle occurs. Now, another young talent that could slip from Barcelona's hands if they don't make a move very, very soon is for Estavio Willian, also known as as Messinho. Roger Toledo from Mundo Portivo came out saying that Estavio William, also known as Messinho, and his father continue to prioritize a move to Barcelona, but the club is unable to make a move right now due to FFP. His current club, Pamiris, want him to start making up his mind with clubs like Chelsea, PSG, and the Manchester clubs already willing to pay his 60 million euro release clause now. He will make a move in Europe in 2025 when he turns 18, but Primeiras wanted to close his sale early, like they did with Endrix with Salamino a year earlier. Messina's father already traveled to Manchester City, PSG, and Chelsea, but the Barcelona project attracted him the most, just like his son, but the club's indecisions making his signing very difficult. So again, the player wants to go to Barcelona, his father's happy with the move to Barcelona, it's just not done to Barcelona, making the move with his club. Again, we don't have the money right now to, you know, guarantee them 
60 million euros for the release clause we kind of have to wait until the summer whether we pay a bit more and pay installments as well as we try to do with Echeverri could be a possibility as well but again this is in Barcelona's hands the player wants to move the, uh, the uh, father wants to move the club don't really care they just want their 60 million euros from PSG is that good as cutting it from Barcelona or Chelsea so it's down to Barcelona again you cannot miss out on both Echeverri and Messino. You have to get one of them, in my opinion. And if you don't, there will be a huge, huge, huge embarrassment for the club. Because again, since Neymar's transfer, we've not picked up any young talent of note from South America. The only one being Victor Roque, who of course is coming in January. One from what? We got Neymar in 2013. 10 years, you've gotten one talent. From South America, the likes of Endrick, Vinicius, Rodrigo, all of them have mascarred those going to PSG. We're missing out on so many top talents who Barcelona going to be late, later linked on in the future. Oh, we could have got them back then, but we couldn't, we couldn't afford it. You know, the sport typical report is going to come out. We cannot miss out on these opportunities. I understand 60 million for a player like Messino is a lot but again you can do that in installments the south american clubs are always happy to do that except for riddle play because the interest was so you know strong he only had one left on his deal where about senior there is a bit more time left so hopefully the club can get this deal over the line but again the clock is ticking but there is a youngster out there who barcelona have been very proactive with and that is the signing of the Swedish talent, Lucas Barrivel. This is coming in from Matteo Morito from Olivo. He's come out saying that Barcelona have made an initial offer of 4 million euros plus bonuses plus a percent of a future sale for Lucas Barrivel. The club is very active in recent weeks. It will be more clear if the operation will go ahead. Inter Miami, or not Inter Miami, Inter Milan are also interested. So Barcelona making good progress on Lucas Barrivel. I've seen some of his clips. This kid looks nasty, especially for the low price of 4 million when you have Messino for 16, Echeverri for around 30 million euros. This is kind of in the budget of something that Barcelona can accomplish in the January transfer window. This would be a big pull again, but you want to get on those big names as well, not just your Bajerval. You want to get Bajerval plus one of Echeverri and Messino, not just Lucas Bajerval himself. But again, the offer has been made, 4 million plus bonuses that's down, down, down to his club in Barcelona to get on down to those final uh, details. Again, Bajerval has already accepted the move to Barcelona. And again, maybe Inter Milan will offer more than Barcelona that will cause of course a bidding war which I believe Barcelona will probably pull out from if that's the case but we'll wait and see the progress has been very very good with Lucas Bacheval has just now done the final details of the operation and then we couldn't even make it official in the January transfer window. Now the biggest news around Barcelona over the past 48 hours has without a shadow of a doubt been the breaking news that came out of absolutely nowhere which is that Barcelona has decided that this summer they will bring back Chadi Riyad. This firstly broke from Sport and they came out saying that Barcelona had made the decision to activate the 7 million euro buyback option on Chadi Riyad who's having a breakthrough season with Betis and he will join the club in June. Barcelona of course sold him for 3.5 million to Betis who executed the option to buy him during the season and they will now buy him back for 7. The club will now activate the option have already informed both Betis and Chadi Riyad about their decision. This was a big bombshell because also there were reports afterwards saying that, oh, Barcelona plan to sell a uh, big uh, center back, Kondi or Christensen, probably going to be sacrificed for Chadri Yad to come into the squad because the club need to make money and make room on the wage bill. I will say this, I think there has been a bit of clarity with this from the report from Fabrizio Romano who came out confirming the news saying that Barcelona want to trigger the 7 million euro buyback clause for Chadri Yad. As of right now, it cannot happen because the clause will be activated at the end of the season when Betis buys the player. Betis also holds a 50% sell-on clause for the future when Barcelona buy him back. So Betis have already told Barcelona, it's already been official, they will buy him at the end of the season for 3.5 million. And now according to reports, Barcelona will buy him back immediately. For 7 million euros but again nothing has happened yet we have not bought him betis have not even bought him either he's still technically on paper straight loan for the current moment anything can happen from now until june christensen kunde aluho can have unbelievable second half of the season and we change our mind i personally think that barcelona want to bring him back to then sell him for more i think that is the reality i think they can i think they can easily make 15 million euros off his transfer for what he's done so far for Betis. Maybe we see the Villarreal come in, uh, maybe a Sociedad come in and get him as well. Maybe help Betis come in and give us more money. But the reality is that essentially Barcelona in this whole entire operation is going to lose about 4 million euros for Chadri Riyad. Because again, he's over 3.5, you bought him back for 7. You could just immediately just straight loan him and kept it plain and simple. But of course, Barcelona had to complicate things. 
with the rumors about, you know, your Kundes and Christensen's, it doesn't really concern me quite yet. It is way, way too early. But this does line up with the Aruho rumors. Oh, Bayern Munich, desperate, desperate, 100 million plus. Barcelona, see it. You sell Aruho for 100 million plus and you bring in Chadria for seven. You're in, in, the, in the checks, you're plus 95 million. So... I'm not going to think about it too much. Just keep your eyes on the center back, uh, you know, situation department for the summer. Of course, there are the likes of Inigo, who probably will not be sold. There even have been talks about Eric Garcia as well. But the reports are is that Eric Garcia, according to Sport as well, will be sold by Barcelona in the summer. They have put him on the market and he will not stay in the first team this summer. Again, the report's not too reliable and it's way, way, way too early to make that decision especially when we have you know the decision about Joel Cancelo and Joel Felix all we have to negotiate now the club have always been transmitting saying that we're not going to sign until May time it should be the same for the likes of Eric Garcia it should be the like the same for the likes of Chad Riyad as well so we're going to see I think a shake up in the center back department this summer whether we bring back Chad Riyad and Eric Garcia and sell them both on or we bring them both back move on Christensen move on Kunde, move on Aruho there's many many options that can be the case I think Chadri Yad is a brilliant center back. I've watched him a lot with Barca Athletic. I even watched him live at the uh, Johan Cruyff Stadium and I think in their final uh, playoff game. Very, very strong defender, great leader out the back, and he had a one hell of a game against Real Madrid at the Benito Villa Marine as well. He's been absolutely brilliant for Betis so far, especially in this past month or so, and they have been having some injuries at the center back department. You know, the likes of Pizella has been injured, uh, Isa Mendy as well. So I, I don't fault the club about this uh, in any regards whatsoever, but we'll have to wait and see how things turn out. But again, the plan for Barcelona is to bring back Chad Riyad this summer, and we could see somewhat of a shakeup in the center back department. Let's now discuss the players that have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 48 hours. First up is the, the talk of the past week in Joao Felix. Of course, we talked about a lot about what the club wanted to do this summer, sign him permanently, or of course, when another big option was to reloan him again. Now, Mateo Marito from Olivo has come out saying that Atletico Madrid have no intentions of letting Joao Felix leave next summer on a simple loan again. Again, the key word there is simple loan. They want a paid loan of at least 15 million euros alongside a purchase option, if possible, to make it mandatory. So again, doesn't really affect Barcelona too, too much. If we were going to loan him again next summer, the buy option or obligation, you could say, was going to be around 40. So if you made the loan fee 15, buy option uh, 20, you got, it's about the same amount. So I don't think a loan fee really hinders that option of Joao Felix coming on loan next season. Again, we could end up loaning him and then him just doing shite and then just take the 50 million euro hit and don't buy him. That could also be an option as well, but... The Joao Felix saga, I think, is starting to heat up. And now it's going to depend a lot in the next few months on his performances on the pitch. They're going to be very, very influential. Of course, the relationship with Xavi as well will be absolutely key. It's going to be out down to him. I don't think it really comes down to what Xavi wants, unfortunately. I think if Joao Felix plays well, gets 10 goals and assists, Laporta will push for it. And I think in the end, Xavi will accept it. But again, it's getting more and more complicated in the sense that it's going to cost money. It's going to cost a lot of money this summer as well. I think, again, Felix probably would value him right now at around 35 to 40 million euros. I think Atletico Madrid see him as a 70 to 80 million euro pound player. I think that's wide off the mark from what we've seen so far. But again, by the way, see how things turn out. As Joel Felix's summer transfer saga is going to be very, very hectic and it will involve a lot of money. Now, you say all the summer that could earn and save Barcelona a lot of money is, of course, the departure of RL9, Robert Lewandowski. And Alfredo Martinez has come out saying that within the club, there are growing frustration with Lewandowski to the point that the possibility of him leaving in the summer cannot be ruled out. Barcelona would look for around 30 million euros for Lewandowski, but with his salary increasing again next season, they would accept 20 million euros. This, for me, is huge. Not only is Lewandowski currently the highest earner at the club, I think alongside Frankie de Jong on 250,000 euros per week, he's going to be earning much more next season. And the club are in a situation now where they either have to cash out or they have to reduce the salary. Lewandowski cannot, cannot go into next season on 300,000 a week. The fact that we're bringing back, we could be bringing back Chadri Riyad and then selling a big asset at center back to you know coincide and comply with Lewandowski's salary is a, is a disgrace beyond belief. He's done he's done absolutely nothing this season to warrant even earning a hundred thousand a week. And you're about to give him well, it's not giving him. He's contractually obliged 
to get 300,000 euros ne uh, next season. It is a big, big move from Barcelona. They have to make a big decision in regards to his future. Now, Sport have come out saying that Barcelona have never considered selling Lewandowski, you know, the player considered leaving the club at least until next year. There are teams in Saudi Arabia who are willing to pay Lewandowski a huge salary, but the player sees himself fulfilling his contract and playing at the highest level for two more seasons. Lewandowski's salary will be significantly increased next season, and Barcelona would need to adjust his salary. There may be an agreement between the two parties to reduce it. Again, if we hear some news that, oh, Barcelona have a gentleman's agreement to have Lundos' salary next season to be the same or go lower, which would be obviously be fantastic, then you could make the case for him staying. We spent 50 million on him total, 45, I believe, plus five or 40 plus five, something around that. Recuperate some of that money as well would be huge. So imagine we sell this out Arabia for 20, his whole entire time at Barcelona, 30 million net. I would save 30 million euros for two seasons at Lewandowski. It would overall be a success. You save on his salary as well. I don't think he's providing really anything to the point that you say to keep him, especially with what he's done this season. Again, Lewandowski, you expect goals. The reality is his job is to score in the back of the net. Yes, his build-up play is good and he gets involved, blah, 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 blah. But when Xavi is telling you and screaming at you on the touchline to do one touch and then he's ripping you a new one in the dressing room at halftime against Almeria, bottom of the table, no wins this season, there are issues. So we'll wait and see. This is a very similar story, in my opinion, to what happened with Luis Suarez, El Pistolero. I mean, he was at least scoring goals in the league, but in the Champions League, he was just so, so shy. But in the league, he was at least still doing it. Lewandowski is doing neither at the current moment. So he has a big, big second half of the season. So much going to happen in the second half of the season, by the way. Center back season to perform, Joao Felix, Lewandowski, Madre Mia. Big, big moment for him as well. But I think there could be a genuine good chance that Lewandowski can be sold this summer. And especially with El Trigino coming in this week. Now, your player's future at Barcelona that is coming to a very, very slow end is the future of Oriol Romeu. With Fernando Polo from Deportivo reporting that Xavi has lost complete confidence in Oriol Romeu, but that does not mean that the possibility of arrival of a midfielder in January would lead to his exit as the squad is short and his exit would hardly generate any FFP. I want to start off by saying that I just want to read that first line. Xavi has lost confidence in Romeu. Do you know how embarrassing that is for a player like Romeu. I was watching the um, the movie that Barcelona uploaded about the Dallas trip, and they just highlighted a lot of Romeu. He's sitting there at the dinner table eating by himself. He's sitting on the plane beside Roberto, first team captain, but they kind of play a La Masia together, reading a book. He's not interacting with the squad whatsoever. And Xavi has the nerve and the balls to come out in the press conference saying that, oh, Romeu, I have very full confidence in him. The media is not affecting him whatsoever. Bullshit. You can see it in the player. The fact that Chavi doesn't even bring him off the bench anymore says enough. Romeo started the season uh, well with De Jong on his side, but little by little he's lost promise with him making mistakes on the ball and also being unable to stop opponents' attacks. The player's confidence has also been decreased and the performance in Antwerp, in which he cost two goals, left him very touched. The fact that he has played two games a week sometimes and he never had the habit of this also affected him as well. I guess we just got rushed on the Romeo vibes in preseason. He was starting week in, week out. He couldn't really keep up with the tempo and the momentum. And as soon as he makes a mistake, he gets dropped to the bench and he comes in. Of course, his confidence is shattered. I think if his uh, exit would help with FFP, I think he'd be gone in January. But we're kind of light on numbers. He wouldn't. His exit doesn't really help anyways. Might as well just keep him. Very similar with Marcos Alonso. Alonso is earning a lot, but no one wants him. There's no point letting him go for free. He helps the squad, you know. Uh, in terms of training and all that stuff, basically why Roberto is still at the club, but I think Romeo is gone in the summer. I really, really do. I hope we can get some money for him. I think the reality is that Barcelona, Barcelona will probably send him back to Girona for free. If we're being completely honest, that or maybe they, you know, we can make some sort of deal with Ro, uh, Romeo, uh, Alex Garcia, Eric Garcia, Arnaud Martinez, Savio. Apparently that was off to Man City. Uh, there's, I don't know. There could be something there, but I think Romeo's you know, future at Barcelona is number. I think all he has to do now is just survive for the summer and then he'll probably be off. But the fact that Xavi has lost all confidence in him probably means, apart from the Copa del Rey against Barbastro in about two weeks' time, we probably won't see Romeo much from now. We probably won't even see Romeo much from now until the end of the season. Now, the midfielder that could be taking Romeo's spot in the first team next season is Pablo Torre, with Sport reporting that Barcelona do not intend to sell Pablo Torre this summer and the idea is for him to join the first team from next season i think especially with you don't know what's gonna happen with gavi i think that is 100 percent the correct decision we had to have someone in there with kind of that creative profile the one who can make that difference in the final third again gavi should be back around september time so we're gonna have august first month of the season you're gonna need someone there and if let's say for example gavi comes back he's back to his regular self probably doesn't get many minutes we could send him out alone in january as well but i think keeping him 
is the right decision for now. And again, it depends a lot on what happens. What if we bring in a pivot in the summer? If we bring in a midfielder in January, what's his profile? Is it short term, long term? A lot of buts and maybe, but I think right now, you know, similar to Chad Riyad, the plan is for Paulo Torre to be part for the first team next season. And I think that is 100% correct. He's now getting some minutes against uh, with Gerona, especially with, uh, young, uh, I think, Yangel Herrera being, being injured. Paulo Torre could not play, of course, against Barcelona with the fear clause. Hopefully now, in the end of the season, he gets some good minutes with uh, Girona and then come to the Barcelona first team next season and make his big impact. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, on the captain of the entire club, Sergi Roberto. Sport of Kemal saying that Sergi Roberto wants to continue for another year and would have the support of the coaching staff as they consider him a reference inside the locker room. The player would be willing to make a new financial effort despite the fact that he is already one of the players who earns the least in the squad so not only does roberto want to stay he is willing to stay for even less money than his current earnings of peanuts <laughs> i tell you what if roberto does well for like the next month or two i think he's guaranteed a renewal i mean if he's saying to the club look i will stay basically for free the club are gonna be like fucking why not i mean he's a squad player he's got the leadership in him he's a captain knows the city knows the club why not he pro probably won't play that much anyways I think Roberto is making, I, again, no matter what happens from now to the end of the season, Roberto could be a starter and get 10 goals, 20 assists. I still, no, I mean, I, if you were, he won't get those numbers, but I wouldn't keep Roberto past his season. I would send him off at the moment week. Thanks for your services. Hit up into Miami. They probably would have had the MLS wrapped up by them. Just join them, win an MLS Cup with the boys, and everyone's happy. I think the boat for Roberto should have sailed last season, but it should, now it has to be sailing this season, in my opinion. But he is, in retrospect, from the club's neutral Point of view make it a good case for his renewal playing well uh important uh, part of the dressing room he wants to stay on even less money than he currently earns which is again he's currently earning absolutely nothing so he's making a good case for himself but again we'll wait and see how the season develops i think especially if chavi survived this season wins the uh, trophies and is the manager for next season that will definitely increase roberto's chances even more of getting a renewal maybe roberto himself wants to get a send off at the new uh camp no as well when the spotify camp no we open 70 000 people instead of the boring uh Montjuic. that could be another thing as well so we'll wait and see with roberto i think right now there is a bit of momentum with his renewal but again nothing will be decided from now until the end of the season the next contract renewal update is on the contract renewal of not even a first team player, not even a Barcelona athletic player, but a juvenile A player in Mark Guiyu. Now, Sport have come out saying that Mark Guiyu's current contract ends in 2025 and Barcelona want to extend it. The club is delighted with him. Guiyu's dream to succeed at Barcelona and stay for many years. He is grateful to Xavi for the chance he has given him in the first team. This should be a very comfortable and easy renewal. We've lost a lot of, you know, juvenile A Barcelona athletic strikers that have been decent. There was that one guy that went to Bayern Leverkusen. He was supposed to be like the next best thing. I forget his name, but we lost out on quite a bit of number nines recently. We got to get, get a hold of, you know, some sort of talent in that position where we do have, you know, lack of injuries currently, uh, confidence, and the market is very, very high for strike, top strikers in the world as well. So just, you know, breeding your own talent will save you a lot of money and also feel better inside as well. So renewing Wayu, very, very important in my opinion. Of course, not as important as Aruho, Pedri, uh, Gavi, Anso Fati, Lemanya Mal, those type of renewals that we have, and De Jong as well, those renewals that we have to focus on. But this should be a very simple and straightforward renewal for Barcelona to complete, and hopefully they do do so at some point in the next few months. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is in regards to Xavi's plan for the second half of the season in regards to the team's uh, performance, personnel, and of course style of play. Tony Juan Marti has come out saying that in 2024, a new version of Xavi will be seen. He plans to create emotional agitation, the kind that makes the players uneasy, a strategy to sting them into bringing out their best versions of their abilities. There will be more demand on the players and the players will be less comfortable. I mean, the fact they're comfortable now is a bit annoying and a bit embarrassing, especially what's happened over the past few months. But hey, I'm here. I'm all here for it. Xavi is really, really eyeing that Super Cup win. Of course, we have also Sudan semifinal, Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid in the other semifinal. If we're set up for another Classico final, we win it again. It's going to give this team a huge boost of morale and confidence. And I think Xavi is really banking on that part. I think he wants to survive Las Palmas, survive Barbastro. I don't, I don't, I think we have another league game as well. I can't remember it off the top of my head. And then we have the Super Cup. I think Xavi wants to get to all those four games, five games or so, get all the wins, and then make that big push for the second half of the season. We're currently seven points off the top. Still in the Cup, of course. Still in the Super Cup. Still in the Champions League. But we need momentum. We need confidence. We need to be able to play well in games, finish our chances as well, or, you know, at least be somewhat better clinically. I mean, I'm seeing stats of Rafinha 
compared to Vinicius and Saka and all this stuff. His numbers are unbelievable, but his goals are just shite because he just misses clear-cut chances. So hopefully we can make that improvement. Again, a lot is riding on Xavi. He has now six months essentially to save his job. He has to win, in my opinion, minimum two trophies or one being the Champions League, which again is, I'm not going to say not unlikely, but very, very difficult. So Xavi's job is at stake. He's at the club of his life. He wants to be the manager for quite some time. I don't think Barcelona really want to be looking for a new manager in, in the summer when they have, you know, a squad to rebuild. Not really rebuild, but to improve upon and, you know, shake up a little bit. So Xavi has a big, big six months ahead of him for his career and for the future of Barcelona as well. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing well, first, of course, your thoughts on the signing of Lucas Bacchiavel, your thoughts on the you know structure of the operation, or your thoughts on possibly losing out on Echeverri and Messino. Second, your thoughts on the return of Chadriad and the implications it may have. Would you bring back Chadriad, then sell on Christensen, Conde, Aruha? What would you ask? For those three center bats in order to be sold. Third, your thoughts on Romeo. Are you at a point where you just cut your loss on him no matter what? Just bet on Casado for the rest of the season. No point of you know having Romeo as part of the squad. And your thoughts on Xavi completely losing trust in him. And finally, your thoughts on the sales that Barcelona are considering and the likes of course Kunde, Christensen, Arujo, but also on those four words in Lewandowski and Joel Felix as well. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.